Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Row of Gilead here it's coming at you with another tutorial video. Today we're talking about understanding raid teams, specifically, uh, you know, when you should invest in them and how much you should invest in them, the shelf life, uh, the teams that have certain standout characters that you're going to invest in beyond what that team's value might normally be, uh, and what teams to build and avoid in 2024. So if this stuff is uh, interesting to you, come on, jump into the video. And if you find this information useful, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. But let's get to it. All right, everybody. So what we have in front of us here, we're looking at our MSF.com uh, roster list of our current raid teams. Now, most of these teams are useful currently. There's a couple at the bottom of the list that we're going to talk about as our more trap teams with some fun characters on them. Uh, and they're also good examples of why to avoid over investing in raid teams. And uh, they're going to serve as an example. But generally speaking, these teams that you see right here in front of us are going to be the teams we're going to want to focus on uh, as far as raid teams going into 2024. The top three of which uh, being your hive mind team with your symbiotes here. Uh, your Extreme X-Men team, and Pegasus, which includes Kestrel and Rescue and Infinity War Iron Man, all really fun characters. These are easily going to be your top three teams, as they are the three newest raid teams. Uh, and they are tops in their category, being Mutant, Bio, and Tech. So these teams right now are the newest in a long line of raid teams, uh, and raid teams don't always hold their value very well. So we need to talk about why minimum investment with raid teams is important and what times it's important to maximize in a raid team because otherwise it's not going to make a lot of sense when we start talking about what teams to avoid moving forward. So when you're trying to min-max your raid teams, you should always be investing in the newest releasing raid team. Now, some of this is going to depend on your timing and joining the game. If you join the game and a new raid team is releasing, that's going to be your raid team uh, for the foreseeable future because they don't start requiring different types of uh, keywords for raid teams until later in the difficulties. And by then, it'll be much, much easier uh, for you to have a more fleshed out lineup. But all the way through your Ultimus raids, the delineations don't really matter all that much between, you know, global, bio, mystic, uh, mutant, all those fun jams. Now, that said, moving forward, once you get into the harder difficulties, that's when raid teams are going to start to become very important. And what you need to do when planning your investments in a raid team is figure out how long that raid team's been around and how you, how far you're going to need to take that raid team to make sure that you get the most out of what you invest. Now, what I mean by that, let's look at the first raid team here on my list, the Hive Mind team. This is one of the newest raid teams, the newest bio raid team. Uh, and I am still working on building them up and I am taking them to the moon. And I'm doing that for a few different reasons. Number one, uh, we're getting to the point where I, I need a new bio team. My rebirth team is not cutting it. Uh, and we're doing the higher difficulty incursions. So I'm going to need the newest teams to make sure that I have a fighting chance of getting through these raid nodes for my alliance. So Hive Mind is one of the newest teams and they're one of the areas I'm struggling the most. So they're the ones I'm investing in first. It also helps that I'm still working through uh, Dark Dimension 6, trying to get my super scroll. And this whole team is super useful in Dark Dimension 6. So something to keep in mind when you're debating on when to invest in something, look at its value, not just in raids, but also in other game modes. Uh, this is one of those fun times where I needed to build them big and it's gonna help me for the next year or up to 10 months or so. And that's gonna be very beneficial to me in a few different game modes. Void Knight is a standout for Cosmic Crucible. And we'll come out to those standout units at the end of this video, but just know that this team right now is gonna be our big focus for discussion for a few different reasons. One, they're new. They got 10 to 12 months left in their shelf life. Two of these characters are rather accessible right now in Venom and Carnage. The rest are slowly becoming farmable. And if you joined in the last couple months, you probably have all of these characters or most of them unlocked. So this is going to be something that you can build into for a long time. And they're also going to be useful in unlocking Morgan Le Fay if you are a newer player and you don't have Apocalypse yet. So Hive Mind, probably the most valuable currently released raid team out there just for its utility it's not necessarily the strongest but it has the utility to be worth every cent of your investments right now so if you're watching this video in 2024 
uh, and you're looking for your bio raid team, or you're a newer player and you have these characters, uh, or at least a handful of them, build into your hive mind raid team. They are going to help you in a lot of different areas right now, uh, especially with the city nodes, because there's not a ton of good city characters, so the more synergy you have there for Dark Dimension and, and raids, the better off you're going to be. Now, before we get into the top you know, teams and what we should be looking to build for the rest of this year, we kind of have to talk about the shelf life of these raid teams. Now, the are, there are two cautionary tales at the very bottom of our of roster here that we'll get to in a second. And Scopely has said that they're not going to do this to us anymore. Uh, and so far, the proof has been in their actions. They haven't. Uh, but raid teams can be good from anywhere from 6 to 12-ish months. Sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less, depending on what raids you are doing. Now, these two teams at the bottom here, Web Warriors and Bionic Avengers, used to be necessary for the Apocalypse grind, and they are not anymore, and we are going to avoid them like the plague. They just do not really function in more current raids, and now that it's even easier to get characters from teams like Bifrost, Extreme X-Men, Hive Mind, Pegasus, and Invaders, in the worst case scenario, you really don't need Web Warriors or Bionic Avengers anymore. And this is, you'll notice, I didn't invest very high in them because when I entered the game, they were already on their way out. I invested in them to get done the content I needed to get done, and then I stopped. Now, a good minimum investment level for a existing player on a raid team. So say you're not sure what raid team is coming up next. You're somewhere in the end of Ultimus, early Doom. Hell, you might even be mid to end Doom. Uh, your minimum investment for any raid team to be viable in and out of its game mode is going to be level 75, gear tier 14. You know, you might have a T4 ability upgraded on somebody there, but generally speaking, that's the max you want to take any raid team. Now, as you get into the later game modes, you get into the incursion raids and the varying difficulties therein, that level of minimum investment has to go up. But I'll tell you right now, looking at my uh specifically my pegasus team and my bifrost team my alliance is an incursion first strike difficulty two and these teams can full auto the mystic and the tech nodes respectively with minimal tampering from me uh i usually just hit auto and they win sometimes they lose and that sucks and i have to uh, replenish them but then they win and then they win the rest of the nodes in that in my lane so level 75 for most of these guys gear tier 14 uh you know you can tell just by looking at their symbols so that is going to be your minimum investment for right now if you get a, if you're level 75 you get this team like bifrost or or uh, pegasus to level 75 gear tier 14 you are golden for what you're trying to do and at your difficulty and if you're in a larger alliance you're gonna be able to kind of help swing up uh, on some of these incursion raids. That's how good these more modern raid teams are. Now, continuing ahead, what do you want to build into 2024? What do you want to kind of pump the brakes on and what do you want to avoid? Well, we've already kind of discussed high mind. I won't beat a dead horse. The extreme X-Men are going to be your new mutant meta team for raids. Uh, you want Pegasus for tech. You want Bifrost for uh, do do mystic and you want invaders for globe uh, not global skill now out of these these top three here our hive mind our extreme x-men and our pegasus teams are going to be doing fantastic work right now both in uh, later dark dimensions in later raids these three teams have just all come out in the last three or four months and again that gives them an eight ish to 12 ish month lifespan uh, and some of them include reworks as well uh, actually, all of them include reworks to some extent, but one or one or two characters. So some of these might even be characters you already have. So pivoting into these raid teams shouldn't be too terrible. And these are going to be solid investments again for the next, well, let's play it safe. Let's say six to eight months. Uh, and again, they have value in other game modes like Cosmic Crucible, War, uh, Dark Dimension. So these all solid calls to invest in. Uh, teams on their way out, Bifrost is kind of on its way out, as well as Invaders. Now, Invaders is kind of a special case at the moment, and we'll get to that in a second. So let's talk Bifrost first. Bifrost is a really solid team, still. They are, I don't think they have really hit 
their ceiling quite yet, but they are rapidly approaching it. And as I can tell you, again, from being in the game for a little under two, well, about a year and a half, that this team, relatively new, has got about four to six months of shop life left. So if you are a brand new player and you stumble across a lot of these characters, you're using Loki early game, you're using uh, Vol if you got him during our sixth anniversary celebration, you know, you're going to have these characters and it's not not worth building. But again, we rec I don't recommend anyone on the channel right now building this team above 75 level 7580 gear tier 14 or 15 you really wholeheartedly don't need it unless you're in the very very end stages of the incursion raids and if you're watching this video to learn what raid teams you should be using it's probably not you now the special case here we have to talk about the elephant in the room that is the invaders this team is going to depend on your lane what level uh, alliance your raids are running again minimum investment is necessary because they're the only real skill raid team that you can invest in right now so again at least level 75 gear tier 14 minimum right and then of course if you're in the later incursion raids they're going to need to be a little higher uh, i thankfully have not had to deal with them too much so mine are all around 75 80 gear tier 14 15 and that is what it is now uh bottom of our list here we have two teams that are important to have and your investment is going to vary first and foremost we have to talk about death seed here death seed is very very important because you need it to unlock apocalypse and apocalypse is easily the second best character in the game right now in 2024 he will be the third best character in about a month when people start unlocking um mephisto and he'll be the fourth best character next year when they unlock another dark dimension character apocalypse it should not be understated is one of the strongest single units in the game you can use him in plug and play viability he has many team comps with his horseman teams that he can fit into he is a necessary component to a winning roster so you're going to need to invest in death seed and if you look at my mutant teams you'll notice my extreme x-men isn't as high because my death seed investment that i needed to get my big boy apocalypse is still holding rather well uh, i have to double tap things here and there uh, with another hybrid team but generally speaking this team is on its way out but you can get into the first strike incursion two stuff with death seed they will take you very very far so if you're a newer player death seed is a very good team to invest in they will help you to ensure that you have a a long lasting great mutant raid team that'll take you into the mid to end game of raids and you'll only really have to build uh extreme x-men once this initial investment to get your big boy apocalypse starts running out so i would always recommend if you're, especially if you're a newer player building out death seed first building these other x-men from extreme x-men in the background uh and then this way when this team is out this team might not even be useful for you anymore there might be a new meta mutant team so if you don't have apoc you should probably be investing in your death seed team if you do have apoc it should more than likely be extreme x-men all the way uh the last debatable team is rebirth this team is also on its way out they are used to unlock different legendary characters in the game and both uh, captain america and captain carter got reworks for the new war team out of time with black knight and star brand uh, and cosmic ghost rider so they have some value the good thing about Rebirth is it's going to be a very early bio raid team that's going to be very easy to build. Um, most players, I don't think, will take them to where mine are in the, you know, level 80 gear tier 16. Uh, just because, with the exception of the captains, you're not going to use the other three all that often outside of raids. Uh, they're a great beginner raid team. Again, this will be for most newer players. You can use them, but they're going to be a minimum investment team level 75 gear tier 14 they're going to take you a long way especially if you're having trouble building up the hive mind team but you know they're not going to be great they're on their way out so avoid rebirth but if it's easier you can give it that minimum investment treatment and it's going to get you a lot of effort it's going to get you a good defense team for war cosmic crucible it's not a terrible investment now Last but not least, talk about two terrible investments, Web Warriors and Bionic Avengers. Uh, these teams were, again, released for the Apocalypse grind. They had very, very short shelf lives, and they do not function whatsoever in today's raids. So I, uh, it hurts my soul that I have to look at so many Spider-Man characters and go, no, I can never use you again. Or so many Iron Man characters and go, no, I can never really use you again. But 
if you want to make the most out of your investments in your raid teams, that is unfortunately the case. Uh, you know, if you have a passion project, you just really want a good Web Warriors, that's on you. Uh, I can't say I blame you. They're a fun looking team, but they just have not held up going into the end of 2023 into 2024. And they do not seem to be getting any reworks or buffs anytime soon. Same thing with Bionic Avengers. Bionic Avengers was the shortest shelf life raid team. The community rioted. And uh, even before Scopely sold into their new entity, uh, they <laughs> promised us they'd never do this again. And they have held true to that. So make sure if you are building raid teams, avoid Web Warriors, avoid Bionic Avengers. Everything else viewed here uh, has some value. But just to recap, remember max investment right now in March of 2024, you can put into Hive Mind, Extreme X Men, and the Pegasus Squads. All fantastic teams in multiple different game modes. They help in Dark Dimension, Cosmic Crucible, War. Uh, they're fantastic. Uh, and they are the, easily some of the most useful raid teams we've ever had backup investments always invest in you can invest in bifrost currently and then lastly avoid max investment if you can but invaders is unfortunately a, a necessary evil at the moment now let's wrap this up with um just a kind of quick round down we've talked about min maxing your investments on these teams we've talked about the most valuable teams to use but we haven't talked about some unique units that we can consider most valuable players right there are mvps on these teams that you can build above and beyond the minimum because they are going to go above and beyond in other game modes so let's take a moment let's run through these teams real fast and just kind of highlight the one or two big characters that you can pull out of these teams to plug and play on other teams and get you some extra longevity in your investment so starting with hive mind we have void knight Void Knight is super clutch in the end game of the arena right now, if you're a big arena player. And he seems like he's going to be like his uh, non-symbiote counterpart, Silver Surfer, and be viable and plug and play for a very long time. He has strong abilities with ability block uh, and stuns and things of that nature. So Void Knight can be built above and beyond any of these other characters on High Mind. He'll probably be the first character from this team I get to gear 19. Uh, moving over to Extreme X-Men. This team has a bunch of really solid units that you can build at any given time, but the most important two here are going to be Gambit and Nightcrawler. Now, the good news is Gambit you're going to have built way sooner than uh, you're going to need him for this because of the Apocalypse grind. And Gambit is fantastic for Dark Dimension. His uh, passive pings with his cards are fantastic. I uh, can't stress enough how great Gambit, uh, of a character Gambit is. You're going to have him leveled up anyway. Nightcrawler, as he becomes farmable in the game, is another fantastic character that works in Arena, he works in Cosmic Crucible and in War, and he is just very strong. He's one of the few characters in the game that applies Expose, uh, which is a fun, unique mechanic that certain characters can take advantage of, uh, and that makes him very valuable in a, a bunch of different game modes. So we can go and add Gambit and Nightcrawler to our list there. Hopping over to Pegasus. Uh, there's technically only one character here that's super important, I mean Kestrel, and you'll have Kestrel very early in your Marvel Strike Force career, and you should always invest in Kestrel. I'm very excited to take her into Dark Dimension 6. She is a fantastic character. They always keep these Marvel Strike Force characters uh, exclusives pretty fresh, uh, so solid dynamite investment. And we're going to kind of give an honorable mention to Infinity War Iron Man. He's a little less plug-and-play viable, but he does have the Avengers tag. He has an ability block. He has some combos that he can pull off with Avengers. Uh, so though not as to-the-moon investment-wise uh, as Kestrel, he is still very worth putting a little extra investment on that team. Uh, moving to Bifrost, the only one I would really recommend here is Ball. They are the first non-binary character and they have a female skin and a male skin and a non-binary skin it's very interesting but no matter what Val is another character that takes advantage of and uh, applies exposed to other enemy teammates so having Val on your side in a lot of different plug and play situations whether it's cosmic crucible war dark dimension Val is a very valuable character and he can see uh, a lot of positive investment uh, Val at three diamonds is over half a million points he's very very fun i've seen some gameplay uh, I'm definitely not done investing in my ball. Moving ahead to our Invaders team. Again, this is a minimum investment team, but there is something to be said about Nick Fury. He has good synergy with Avengers and Shield uh, teams, but also he's a legendary unit. And as we get further into the Dark Dimensions, it requires you to have legendary characters uh, at certain gear tiers, 
Now, what makes Nick Fury nice, he has summons, he heals, he has a lot of, again, passive synergy with Avengers and other shield units, uh, making him uh, a lot more plug and play viable. Uh, again, you can see mine. I'm actually will be taking mine for Dark Dimension 6 here. I'll be taking him to gear tier 18 in the not too distant future. But again, he's the only one on that team you're going to want to invest in. Uh, lastly, we'll wrap up with Death Seed. This is about where my Death Seed stopped at the end of my Big Boy Apocalypse grind. So that's where it stayed. Uh, I've gotten some of the red stars filled out since then, just from grinding the different nodes uh, and pulling the orbs. But uh, you get them to gear tier level 90, gear tier 17. And that is where you can stop with them because that's all you need them for for Apocalypse. Uh, and then Rebirth, uh, Cap America and Captain Carter are your two MVPs from this team. They are just got reworks to be part of the Out of Time team where they uh, perform the same synergy functions that they did on the Rebirth team. So having them upgraded seems to be a solid play. And again, they're great global characters. If you use them in Dark Dimension, they have synergy with Avengers and other teams. Uh, so you can't really go wrong with those. So just to recap, brief list of all these mvps going in order by team we've got void knight gambit nightcrawler we've got kestrel we've got infinity war iron man we've got ball nick fury and captain america and captain carter and of course the whole honorable mention to the death seed team which you need for apocalypse so that said, everybody, that brings us to a close. I hope that this video has helped you understand the landscape of raid teams, what the minimum investment should be, when you should stop investing. Again, especially as the team gets older, make sure you're dialing back on that investment on these older teams and just upgrading them to what you need to be successful in these raids with your alliance. So now that we're all wrapped up, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below, uh, especially if you uh, want to see more videos like this in the future or if this is officially outdated and we need to make another one. Please make sure you're leaving those comments and those likes. Let me know what I can do to make it a better experience for you guys. But as always, my friends, long days and pleasant nights, and I'll catch you all in the next one.